Welcome back, everyone. So this is part two of this um, intro to uh, Grasshopper with Rhino inside. And part one, um, we went over how to get elements that are modeled in the Revit environment and um, study their uh, parameters and the parameter values. And we also went through how to construct a script that could create a unique identifier or an index and apply it to the project index, the project parameter that we labeled index. We also created a project parameter that's called section profile that we gave the value W2. And since the last video, I've given this a little bit more thought and I think we need to relabel a part of these things. So I think the section profile is kind of misleading because technically industry standard, the section profile is what they call this W21 by 147 or whatever it is. So instead of section profile here, what I actually want to rename this to is AISC type. So the AISC stands for American Institute of Steel Construction and the type is going to be either WSC, HSS and so on. So let's go to manage project parameters and under section profile here we can just click on modify and we could type in here AISC type and say okay. And say okay one more time. And there's another one actually, and I don't know if I created this last time. I don't really remember this W. We want to remove that. We actually don't want that and say okay. Now let's go back to our grasshopper environment. So if you minimize your, if you lost it, you can go click on uh, the rhinoceros tab and click on grasshopper and it should come up. So now instead of this section profile, I mean, I'm not updating the section profile anymore, but just to stay consistent, I want to kind of update my, um, my parameters, my parameter label here, just in case in the future I want to go back and relabel this. But if we go back to our uh, file and click on a member, right now where it says W, it says AISC type. So if we click on a tube, that should say HSS. So it's still, although we relabeled the parameter name, the stored value of each parameter still remained the same. That did not change when you relabel the name. You will lose it, however, if you actually completely remove the parameter from the project and then add it later. So now let's go back to our grasshopper window. Um, and for this video, what I really want to do is essentially construct a database and export it to grasshopper. I'm sorry, export it to Excel. So this database is going to have some headers. This database is an Excel spreadsheet. An Excel spreadsheet has uh, columns and rows. And for our columns, we need headers. So I want to go to params, input, and get a panel component, and right-click on this panel component and switch it to multi-line data. So now I can double-click on it, erase what's there, and now I want to type in all of the column headers that I need separated by a space or an enter. An enter value. So, a um, the first column header is going to be A I S C type. The second one is going to be our unique index. The third one is going to be section profile. So that's actually the type name, the W twelve by one forty seven or whatever it is. And then the third is going to be length. The fourth is going to be weight. And the, so this is going to be weight per linear foot. And the fifth is going to be weight per member. So we have to do some basic math here to figure out those values. And I think for right now, having six, uh, six columns will be enough. So to kind of develop my um, Excel spreadsheet exporter, we want to go to Lunchbox, go to Workflow, and get a component that's called Excel Write. And so the headings that I want to write to Excel, so these are the headings, these are the column headings. I want to plug my panel into the headings input. This this write here, this first input, this is just a true or false value to write to that file. So I want to go to params, input, and get a boolean, and then boolean toggle and plug that into here. So if I switch this to true, it'll write it. Now I also need a path, so the path that I'm going to write it to is where I've been saving all of my files. Yours is going to be slightly different. So I need to copy that path, so you go, you go and find the path on your Windows Explorer, click on this spacebar here and copy it. 
and get a number uh, a, a, a panel, a text panel, and paste that path. But we also want to add a little bit more to that path. So we want to add forward slash, and we want to add in the the number. I'm sorry, not the number. The um, label or the, the the name of our file. So in this case, is going to be steel takeoff dot xlsx that's the excel extension and then we're going to plug that into the path and again make sure that this this boolean toggle is switched to false because i don't actually write anything to it yet so the worksheet name if you recall from excel excel has worksheets and each worksheet has a unique name so i also want to type in a unique name for that and all you have to do is double click on the canvas grasshopper canvas type in open quotations and I'm going to type in steel takeoff enter that gives me a panel with the string steel takeoff embedded into it so I'm going to plug that into worksheet and now the data is the data we're going to actually generate and clear this is also a true or false value this is telling you that if there is a file that already exists in that file directory that it would clear that it would overwrite that file essentially but since there isn't a file, I'm going to just ignore that for right now. So now that I have my Excel exporter set up, let's um, move that to the side and let's start constructing our database. So to start constructing our database, we want to basically weave or entwine or collect all of our data into one container so that we can build a data tree. And the component for that, and I think we've used that last time, is the entwine component. So if you go to sets, tree, um, get the entwine component and let's right click on that and uncheck flatten inputs so the first one is going to be this AISC type um, unfortunately I can't right click on this and relabel it so for right now I'm just going to have a travel with this but I know that I have six inputs zero to five so what I could do is just zoom in here and click on the plus sign until I get five or six inputs zero to five and since the first one is AISC type, I want to, I don't want to get that from how I constructed this, um, these values here in the, in the previous video to actually add the type. Now that the, the type value is actually added to the parameter inside my project, I want to get the latest from my project. So what I want to do is go back and decompose the parameters of this element. So I want to go to Revit tab, element, element decompose and plug the elements output of this component into the elements input of element decompose and then right click and say get all parameters and let's move that here so I know that uh, somewhere here AISC type is listed and I know that I want that one so one quick I don't want to have to scroll through this entire list every time so the shortcut to that is to get a data container so under params primitive there is a um, data container and if I plug AISC type output into the data container input and then if I hover over the input of element decompose and right click there's an option to remove all unconnected parameters and now all it's listing is AISC type so that's pretty cool and now I simply I mean if, if we actually look inside the data it should list us all the values from those fields so I basically want to plug that into my first um, input input of my entwine component. Let's delete that. Actually, I'm going to keep that because I'm going to use it here in a bit. So now I want to repeat this again. My second input is going to be my index. Well, that's also a, um, I'm going to get all parameters. That's also a specific parameter that I created. And remember, it's called index. So I'm going to plug that into my container and right click again and say remove all unconnected parameters. And plug that into here I'm gonna copy and paste that again so what else do we have we have section profile with well, the section profile is really the type name right so if I select a component here this is telling me that this is a white flange family and the type is w18 by 211 that's the section profile that I need um, so all I need to do in my grasshopper window is get the type name so again I'm going to get all parameters and somewhere in here there's type name plug that into here into this container and 
right click and say remove all unconnected parameters and then uh oh why is that why is that no we're gonna have to investigate this let's see actually there's a there's an even more efficient way I don't know why this null and honestly I don't think it's useful of our time to figure it out what we could do is go to element and say element identity and then we want to go all the way back here or the shortcut if you don't want to go back since I know that this component here is plugged into my element output and the from upstream the script I can double click on it so it'll give me a temporary node and then I can branch off or fork off this node and plug into here and that will give me my type name right here under the n name so then I can just delete this node so now I know that this is my type name and just to be just to double check make sure that this is actually a string and not a Revit smart type I want to basically convert whatever is stored in this and this output into a string so I'm going to go to params primitive and get a text container and plug that output into the input of the text container and nothing should change but I know for a fact now that that's a string and then right click on this and flatten and we actually want to do that for every every time we input something into our entwine component so our data tree can stay organized so this is my type so the the third item is length length I know for sure it's actually a instance parameter available here so I could just plug I right click on here and say get all parameters and one of them is dimensions length make sure that you actually use length and not the cut length so in Revit there's two lengths there's the cut length the cut length is between the faces of these columns and the length of the entire member you notice here that the length of this member is 12 but the cut length is a bit shorter and Revit is calculating the actual dimension the physical dimension of the member and I think to just say on the safe side for quantity takeoffs we want to actually get the full length of the member um, and just I know that's not that's not actually going to be the physical full length but there's also there's there's always it's always good practice to kind of round up on ca uh, on quantity takeoff estimations so this is why you want to make sure that you want to get the length parameter and not the cut length so again right click on this and say remove all unconnected parameters and again let's flatten that input and plug that into three here and now the last one that we want to get is weight per linear foot the weight per linear foot is a type parameter stored inside each element so if you select the element in the Revit window and click on edit type that's going to be given to you as the parameter W and this is telling you that this is hundred and twenty pounds per linear foot and the um, parameter A is the cross-sectional area which is 0.25 square feet um, actually now that I now that I see that what I want to do is actually add another one so I have uh, weight per linear foot I also have area per cross section let's do that I think that will potentially become useful potentially and let's let's change their order so I just added another um, header or another head and name to our Excel spreadsheet which means I need to go in here and add another input stream so let's go over this one more time so I have my AISC type that's plugged into input stream zero that's corresponding to zero I have my index that's plugged into input stream one that's corresponding to index one in my headers and then I have my section profile which is really the type name that's plugged into input stream two that's stored in index two in my headers and then I have my length that's plugged into input stream three that's stored in index three under my headers so now I need area weight and weight of the member itself all right so let's um, let's let's try to get the area weight so if you remember from the last video I showed you this um, way to get a element parameter right so this is under Revit tab element element dot parameter git and this asks for two two um, items the element key or element ID 
and then the parameter key. All right, so the element ID or the element itself is the element that you want to query. So I know that this is plugged into my element, so I can double click in here, here, double click here to fork off of it and plug into here. Alternatively, if you don't know that, let's undo here. If you don't know that, you have to like place this component on Canvas, select it, scroll out, and go all the way back upstream to connect it this way. So that's why that kind of forking is a just a neat or quick trick, a shortcut trick to make make the way you navigate the grasshopper script uh, just a bit simpler all right so now i have my element that i want to get the parameter of and the parameter if you remember the parameter i want to get it's titled w and a so there's two parameters i want to get the weight and the cross-sectional area um, so let's see what happens if we just basically get a panel and say the parameter name that i want to get is w and plug that into here. See what happens. So it's throwing me an error. Before I move on, I want to actually save. So it's throwing me an error. Let's right click and say, let's read the error. It says parameter W not defined an element. Well, that's because the parameters that this component can feed by just, so if, the element input, if we just feed it the element input, this is going to read the instance parameters. But if I want to read the type parameters, I actually want to plug into this element input the actual type instead of the instance. It's a bit confusing if you don't completely understand Revit difference, the Revit differences between type and instances. But this is how you kind of differentiate, differentiate between two sets of parameters. I explained last time how you can understand the, the difference between instance and type parameters and context of doors. So what I need to plug into this element input is not the instance of the element, but the type of the element. And had I not had this component here, I would say go to Revit, go to element and element identity, and then plug the original element into that and now I have access to the type of the element to the to the properties of the type so I can plug this T output into the E input of this component and that should give me the properties that I'm looking for or the um, the the parameter that I'm looking for and now that changed from orange to white which means it's processing data correctly and now it's giving me all the values that are stored in those types so again, this component and that component, they're exactly the same. So what I actually want to do is just switch these out and delete that. I don't want, I don't want to have do, I don't want to duplicate my components here. So this is, this is for my W or my, um, my, um, my, my weight per linear foot. Now what I want to do is basically duplicate this. You can see how slow this could potentially get if it's a full, like, you know, if you have like 10,000 members of steel or 2,000 members of steel or whatever. So now I want to switch this W to an A to get the cross-sectional area. And this is the cross-sectional area, and that's correct. Now what I want to do is make sure to convert these to numbers before I actually plug them into my stream. So just like we converted this to text, well, there's another um, 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 number container. So just in case that what's stored in this component is a string and not actually a number, although it reads like a number, I want to make sure that this definitely reads as a number. And then plug, right click on this and flatten. Again, we want to just make sure that our data is consistent and then plug that output. This is air. Uh, this is the weight per linear foot. Plug that into five and then the area. Plug that into four. So then to do the weight per member where the weight of the member is essentially the um, the weight per linear foot times the length of each member. So we already have the length of each member is in this component and then we have the weight per linear foot. So let's let's study the length. So here, this length is given to us. Um, like each, this is, says it's 31, which is 31 feet. 
Revit by default reads in feet. Um, so all I have to do is essentially convert that to a value as well, which I should have done actually from the beginning. So let's convert that to a number as well, like so, and plug that into the input stream three. And now all I need to do is just get a, go to math, operators, and get a multiplication component. And I simply want to multiply the length times the weight per, um, per linear foot. And that gives me the total weight of the member. So this is telling me that this member, this first member, whichever member that is, that member weighs 5,239 pounds. So just to get an idea of which member this is, let's, um, let's fire up our Rhino viewport. And let's actually filter out these members accordingly. Let's see. Let's see how to do that. So I have all my members here. Let's see, what I want to do is go to my Revit tab and get element geometry. Let's turn off our previewer, double click on this so I can fork off again. and then plug the output of this fork into the element input of element geometry component, and then right click on LOD and switch that to fine. And that should preview all of our elements. So I know so to, to preview what's stored in index one, what I simply want to do, well, let's, let's do this actually. Let's select all of it, everything in the canvas, and turn off, disable the preview. So if you select everything and click your mouse wheel, there's this avatar with uh, like a, a blindfold on just click on that and that will disable the preview and now let's enable the preview of all geometry and nothing will be previewed because everything is disabled and let's preview that one you see everything is in red so one quick trick to to utilize here let's let's go to sets list list item and let's plug the element geometry component output into the list input of list item uh, we have to flatten this list input. So you see now my that one column is given to me in green. But what I want to do is actually affect my, change my Grasshopper Previewer. So if I click on this icon right here, it says Document Preview Setting. What I want to do is change my normal preview to kind of something like gray and very, very transparent. There it is. So it's really gray and transparent. And then for selected, I want to change that to like red. Something really in contrast. So now what's being previewed, so if I select that, that clearly shows me what's being selected in red. So this first column here, my calculation is telling me that this column weighs 5,239. And of course, all of this is active. So if I go into my Revit window and select this column, and give it a top offset of say 30, 30 feet for whatever reason. Um, the reason you're not you're not seeing that is because I had a crop. So this is my column at 30 feet. Now if I go back to my grasshopper window, before I recompute again, let's save just in case the software crashes. And let's click your mouse wheel, click the mouse wheel, and click on this recompute icon, this play icon. We should see the total number of pounds increase from whatever it was, which is 5,000 something to something, I don't know, at least double of that, at least, I think. There it is. It's now 10,309. So all of this is completely live. So now that we have this information, we want to basically plug it into the last input stream and we want to plug the output of the entwine component into the data input and now we're ready to write our excel spreadsheet so again let's um go to file and save i don't recall i just this just became clear to me i don't recall in the last video 
if I talked about where to get Lunchbox from. So if you don't have Lunchbox, you want to go to Food for Rhino. That's a plugin you install, and it's a free plugin. And just type in Lunchbox here. And here's your Lunchbox plugin for Grasshopper. Lunchbox is a really, really, really helpful plugin for Grasshopper. I've been using it for years, and I wouldn't be able to use Grasshopper the way I do without it. So just log in, create an account. It's free to create an account. Log in and download it and install it prior to running Revit. Another, um, another plugin that I use is MetaHopper. And MetaHopper basically just controls previews, right? So again, log in and download and install it prior to over here I think there's a typically they give you how to install the installation of these things is pretty straightforward if you I don't have I don't think I'm logged in but if you log in there is typically a function here that you expand and it'll give you a step by step on how to install it so MetaHopper if you go to MetaHopper the one that I use over and over again is this control wire display so Let's bracket that. You see how all my wires are thick and they're kind of distracting. So if I select everything, go to this control and then say select, right click on W and switch to faint. It switches all of my wire displays to faint. I want to actually delete that. I don't need that one. You can also, you see how it's just, the canvas now just looks a little bit better. It's not as, it doesn't look as cluttered. And the other rule that I try not to, try not to um, break is the wire should never go backward. Data always flows downstream. So these components should flow downstream with the data. It's, it's, it's a really helpful trick to kind of get a habit to get it to get used to because when you're troubleshooting and when you're debugging, especially if you're debugging someone else's script, you want to kind of click on a single component and follow the wires upstream so that you can troubleshoot it. Another helpful thing about this component, this, this uh, control wild display, you can switch that to hidden. And now all of your wires are hidden. So if you have an error, let's just say this is throwing an error and I don't understand it, and there's a few things that are lighting up down, upstream, I can just simply click it and it'll start giving me a temporary preview of where things are going and I can trace back my steps and be able to troubleshoot efficiently. So right click on that, switch it to faint. All right, so now we're ready. Let's save one more time. And let's click on, let's switch this to a Boolean toggle to true and see what happens. So you see your Excel spreadsheet window kind of fires up on the bottom. And if you go to wherever you save this, you should see an Excel spreadsheet with that same title you typed in that panel. So right click, right -click on that and open it. See what happens. <clears throat> and here's our database. So you just now created an Excel spreadsheet database of all the unique members in Revit. So if you select all of them and double click on one of the columns, it'll expand all of them. One quick way to filter out the spreadsheet is to click on the first column, go to this filter and click on filter. And now I can easily filter by the different section profiles so I can study them independently. This is my columns. Um, the only thing that would be helpful is is in the it's in the index or somewhere maybe another column that if I could tell like right now in this spreadsheet I can't tell which one is a column and which one is a beam so it would be helpful to be able to actually have that as a field somewhere that could tell me what is caught what is a column what is a beam so for the last bit of this video let's let's just do that let's find a way in grasshopper to create to separate out this list and have it list us what is a column and what is a beam. So let's uh, do not save this spreadsheet. Let's switch this to false so that it won't be actively writing to it in real time. So now let's uh, let's see how we could 
how we could um, study which one is column, which one is beam. So this this component here, this um, element identity, you plug the element that you want to query, and it gives you the categories, the um, the type name, and then the name of the type. If we plug the categories into here, well, I know that in Revit there's only two categories, right? There's a structural framing category and structural columns. If it's structural column, it's going to be a column. And if it's framing, it has to be a beam of some sort. It has to be a beam or a girder or a joist or a brace. I know if it's a structural framing component, it cannot be a column. So what I could use, what I could do is just use that output um, of the structural ca of the Revit category to kind of identify the difference between the two. Before I move on, what I really want to do is after my AAC AISC type, I want to type in um, here structural usage. And I want to zoom in under one here and add in one more branch. So now I have seven here and seven there. Okay, so structural usage, uh, I have these, so all I have to do is do some text processing. First of all, I want to make sure to convert whatever is stored in this output to just text. So I'm going to go to params, primitive, text. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's the same panel, nothing changes. Let's flatten that just to make sure that everything is kind of neat. Um, so now what I want to do is basically be able to say that if it's a column, give me the label COL. And if it's a beam, give me, or framing element, give me the label BEM for beam. Or FRA for framing. Or we could even simplify and say, I actually want to do some, some sort of, you know, unique indexing. I don't want to just call it structural column, structural framing. So let's first separate this out. Um, actually, let's, let's, let's try to do this. Let's go to math and script and get an expression. And double click. Well, first of all, let's uh, eliminate this Y input from this expression. We don't need it. Let's double click inside this expression. Now we're in the expression designer or the expression editor. And now I could just type in a simple if and then statement. So I wanted to tell it if you see the label or if the label structural column exists, give me COL instead. Otherwise, give me BEM, something like that. Um, so let's type in if X is equal to X is going to be the input in the expression editor input or in the expression input. So if X is equal to I have to type in this whole thing, Revit category, space, colon, space, structural, columns, then give me the string COL, otherwise give me the string BEM, close parentheses, and say okay. Let's see if this works, I don't actually know if this works, I've never tried this, no it didn't work, hmm. oh, you know what? I think I need to have this be recognized as a, as, a, as a piece of text. If you don't put the quotations around something, then the expression editor won't recognize that it's text. I think now it's working. There we go. So this is all columns and beams. If this is starting to get so long, like this is a long box of text, and I don't want to see that every time. It also visually bogs down my script. What I could do is instead is get a evaluate um, component and this is doing exactly the same thing. It's just instead of previewing it in a in a window like this, we want to basically copy all of that, and then right click on this F and under Expression Editor, paste that in, and plug in the the X input. So now we just kind of condense this whole this whole stream into one, and it should give us the same results. Um, so now let's plug this into the first stream, and notice that. Because we've already created the Excel spreadsheet, this is where now it becomes somewhat important to make sure that this clear value is set to true. Um, so let's go to let's get a let's go to params tab input and get another boolean toggle, and let's plug it in here and set this to true. And then let's, let's again file save before we actually write this Excel spreadsheet. And now let's um, switch this to true, and let's write this Excel spreadsheet. Right, I think uh, we might be done. Maybe 357, 
256, yeah, I think um, that did it. Let's see what's inside this right now. All right, so it did it. That's awesome. Let's maximize this, maximize each column, and then let's uh, click on the first row and click on filter here. And now we can filter by type. So we can say, give us all of our W sections. And now we could filter by beam or column as well. So now these are the columns inside the W sections. And that's the unique index for each item. That's the section profile. That's the length of each item, the cross-sectional area, the weight per linear foot, and the weight per member. We can just say clear filter here to go back to how it was. So if we want to know the total weight of this project, we could just type in here total. And here we can type in equals sum open parentheses and let's sum all of these cells, close parentheses, enter. So this small structure that we just did weighs 67,608 pounds. Um, yeah, I think this is it for this video, everyone. I hope, um, I hope you're able to follow through. Please email me with whatever questions you have. If there's something that was, that was not, that was that was obvious to me that I kind of just uh, glared over that wasn't obvious to me th that wasn't obvious to you please don't hesitate to email me and our on our weekly calls please don't forget to ask all these questions to the whole class so what I would do is prior to every class I would run through these um, videos and then jot down questions as they arise so that when we meet um, every week you have a lot of questions already jotted down so you won't have to rely on your memory to recall all the questions that you had while working through this and the third video we're going to take that excel spreadsheet and create some visualizations using power bi with microsoft um yeah so till then